So it appears that Matt Damon, yes, that's right, Matt Damon has gone pretty viral uh, for a clip of his on uh, Hot Ones. It's a really cool show where they interview guests, having them eat really spicy wings. You know, it kind of has like almost almost like a drunken effect, essentially, on the interviewer. It's really interesting. It's a cool idea. It's a cool show. And he was asked by Sean, you know, uh, whether or not movies are made for people anymore or who it's being made for and why it seems that movie quality has declined. So go ahead and check out this clip. So I think a scenario lots of viewers can relate to is, is sitting on the couch on a Friday night, going through the streaming services, cycling through the movies and, and thinking to themselves, they're not making movies for me anymore. As somebody who's been intimately involved in movie making for 30 years, what are the macro Hollywood conditions behind that sentiment? Well, so what happened was um, the DVD was a huge part of our business, of our revenue stream. And technology has just made that uh, obsolete. And so the movies that, that we used to make, you could afford to not make all of your money when it played in the theater because you knew you had the DVD coming behind the release. And six months later, you'd get all, you know, a whole nother chunk. It would be like reopening the movie almost. And when that went away, that changed the type of movies that we could make. I did this movie behind the candelabra and I talked to a studio executive who explained it was a $25 million movie. I would have to put that much into print and advertising, right? To, to market it, um, what we call p &A. So I'd have to put that in p &A. So now I'm in $50 million. I have to split everything I get with the exhibitor, right? The people who own the movie theaters. So I would have to make $100 million before I got into profit and and the idea of making a hundred million dollars on a story about like a love affair between these two people yeah i love everyone in the movie but I, it's a, that's a that's suddenly a massive gamble in a way that it wasn't in the 1990s when they were making all those kind of movies the kind of movies that i loved and and the kind of movies that were my bread and butter so that clip was pretty interesting and really what it seems like is the case in terms of like the main discussion here is what has happened to like mid-range budget movies. Now I'm honestly not really uh, someone who's qualified to comment on any of this because I'm not a movie buff. I'm actually not really a big movie person whereas I think a significant portion of the population really are like big movie buffs. I'm not one so that's just a quick disclaimer so I'm not really super privy to this stuff. But it does seem like now and I'm kind of confusing myself here but it seems like now with like all these Marvel movies, they keep somehow pulling like the biggest actors in them too. I mean, Christian Bale was just in, uh, you know, the Thor movie. Um, and so you have all these huge, huge, and you had Jake Gyllenhaal in the Spider-Man movie and all this stuff. So there's all these kinds of big budget films that are picking up these biggest uh, movie stars. And it kind of used to be seemingly more of a thing where it was more based on, I guess, the actor themselves. Um, where it would be like, well, you would watch whatever movie Arnold is in, but now it's like Arnold is in whatever big movie there is, as opposed to, that's what it seems like the difference is. So back in the day, you'd go to watch Ar whatever movie Jennifer Aniston or Arnold Schwarzenegger was in. Now you're going to watch whatever franchise is huge, like Marvel or whatever, and in those movies are those big stars. So it seems like it's kind of like a 180 degree flip. And so, you know, there's some really important premises to try to get through here, which are, you know, are there less low budget movies today now? Um, are there worse movies now? Those kinds of things, because sequels used to be really popular before, too. But I think another aspect of this, he's talking about the DVDs also, um, is actually corporate consolidation too. And so corporate consolidation has made it so that more of these companies are just going to uh, you know, acquire these uh, intellectual properties like Marvel and with Disney, what Disney is doing, and they're just gonna keep putting money into it. So every show, like I'm personally in favor of, like someone needs to propose a law banning all Marvel and Star Wars movies, especially anything, not even movies, just anything relating to Marvel of Star Wars just banned them it's gotten so lazy to the point where all they're just going to do is just keep crapping out movies and TV shows about Marvel and it's going to get eaten up like the same way that Drake's garbage music does and it's it's really resulting in a lot of shitty quality stuff a lot of laziness etc and it's really concerning to see and it's almost like it's almost just like off-putting because like oh wow all this stuff is just so lazy 
and it's the same stuff even with like Top Gun Maverick coming out now and just all these different sequel all the sequels for these movies and if it's not a superhero movie like it can't be any kind of different plot it has to be either like a superhero movie a buddy cop movie or some kind of action movie those are like your three safes those are your safes that you can play because you know that those will be eaten up by the audience and it can be acceptable Another aspect is also like the uh, globalism thing, I guess, of people, uh, of these makers of movies trying to get into global markets. And so it's changing the quality of their content in terms of what their creative direction is because they have to appeal to those people as well. You see a lot of stuff in movies where it's so clearly geared towards being allowed by the CCP to be played in China. Um, I think like Transformers 4 was, was like that heavily too. So... I think these are all different things, but it's interesting because in the streaming era, you now have a different situation where movie theater tickets aren't going to, you know, give as much money. And then on top of that, there's not really much back channel money because I guess streaming doesn't actually result in much back channel money, whereas DVDs used to. And it's also an interesting question of, you know, whether in the DVD era people would rewatch movies more. I would definitely a thousand percent agree with that because uh, you would buy a DVD and then you would rewatch a movie like multiple times. Uh, many times if anything uh, but now because of the vast accessibility of movies you're not going to do that so it's kind of interesting to see what's going on here um, in terms of like I guess the death of like the mid-budget movies instead of you know now we see the whole oh, five trillion gazillion billion dollar budgets but it'll be interesting to see maybe if there's a way we can get these kinds of mid-range budgets going again and not just have every movie be about some superhero uh, about Thor or Marvel or Batman or whatever it's like are we getting tired of just like the same Batman same thing movie and we're also seeing that you know uh, DC is like taking down a bunch of its movies after doing test runs with its audiences and so it's just kind of like I don't know it's getting a it's getting a little bit crazy with what's going on but I haven't seen anybody really challenge what Matt Damon has proposed here as the problem that exists currently with these kinds of mid-range budget movies uh, but it does seem to be a big risk and also I just think that it doesn't seem like these big corporations I guess who really have a, 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 th a throat hold over what appears to be the industry it doesn't seem like they really have any interest in creating those movies and so I think that's also a really really huge aspect of this but um, it's really interesting just to see how the culture is moving similar thing to music where now there's not CD sales um, and now it's just you know streaming numbers and streaming doesn't give as much of an output um, but you know artists didn't make jack shit off cds either so you know that's not really a, a big deal for them because you know they weren't getting much off of that but uh with the way movie theaters are now movies are out of the theaters quick they don't make as much money off of the theater tickets the movie makers and uh the dvds don't exist so there's not that much back channel to subsidize that theater loss right so pretty interesting to see and what are some potential solutions i have two questions for you guys one do you agree with the premises are there less like middle range movies that are being put out um, are there more like sequels and just kind of sticking with the same intellectual property and just putting out more and more of that oh here's this marvel show on disney plus here's this marvel movie here's the thou a six sixty nine hundred and sixty nine batman is out or you know whatever stuff like that right um is that happening and then uh what are some proposed solutions definitely let me know some solutions you can think of down below i'm very curious to hear them because um, i'm not a movie buff but you know it's an important thing of american culture and just people's culture in general so very curious to hear your thoughts down below